Would you like a great looking stone cottage with big chimney, some nice outside decoration, internally fitted and a custom tree with a hanging rope swing? This is my walkabout world and it's going to give you a world download. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my Walkabout World series. The whole point of this series is that every episode I release the world download of the build that I have made, and you can walk about the world all the way from episode one right over there and walk about all the way around episode two, episode three, last episode, this rustic church and all its surroundings. And you can walk about and just take a look and take some inspiration or do what you want. Maybe you want to build around it. Entirely up to you. Episode four is down this way. But because it's a walkabout world, I thought I'd make it a little bit scenic on the way. And you've got a little pond with some fishes in it. That's nice, isn't it? Anyway, should we go to the end of this pathway? Because I've got a feeling there's a whole lot of nothing there. And I was right, there is a whole lot of nothing right here, but we're gonna change that up in just a moment. This episode, we're responding to a number of different people who want another cottage, but they want a stone cottage as opposed to a wooden cottage. So we're gonna do something a little bit more blocky, a little bit more bricky, and quite small, I think. Certainly, no bigger than a chunk, absolute maximum, is my thinking. We'll probably approach it in a little bit of a different way. In fact, I think I might start with the chimney and work out from that. I know, blown my mind. Let's see what we gotta do. As we always do in this episode, it is gonna be a freestyle build, but I think the palette is gonna be something like this. Lots and lots of stony items, a little bit of brick, which I may or may not use. I don't tend to use it a lot, but it might work for this one. Just a little bit of wood, but I'm sticking with oak pretty much exclusively, except for a little bit of spruce fence maybe, and a spruce door, and then obviously some other little bits and pieces as well. Let's get on with it. So what I wanted to do first, like I say, is place the chimney. Now, I don't know why I wanna place the chimney first. It just feels right for this build. So that's the way we're gonna go. And I'm literally gonna place a square here. And it's going to be, should I go three by three or four by four? Let's go, I'll tell you, go four by four, I reckon, like that. There we go. So now we know exactly where the chimney is going to be. And I'm just going to come up, just to make it fairly obvious and imposing, and in fact, I don't overlap it because I tend to go up a level or two, don't I, with three layers. This isn't going to remain cobble, neither is it going to remain solid. But at the minute, I think that will do nicely and then what I want to do is I want to get some cobble and I'm going to make the outline of the house and I need to think about how I'm going to do this so if I imagine this chimney stack bit is coming out here if I come out there and make that so if I come out one two three four five six and seven that will probably do two three four five six and seven and then this way as well I need to come down and out a little bit. So one, two, three, four, is five gonna be enough? I think five would be enough actually. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then come along and join this up. So as it's along here. And then, so this is the, the wall of the house. And you can see the kind of shape I'm going for. If I come up here, you can see that it's, it's relatively L shape, but the big imposing chimney in the middle. I don't tend to do big imposing chimneys, so I thought I'd give it a go. Then I'm gonna fill in inside using some stripped oak. Not that way. I'm not gonna do crisscross on this one. I'm gonna do straight so as it's like planks. And then we're gonna to start to build up the walls, build up the chimney area, and see where it goes from there. I also think, obviously, I need to get myself a little bit of depth by shoving one of these on each corner. Let's crack on with it. Once I built the floor up, I decided to get the walls up a decent height with two high windows and then close them off with another row. I think this is tall enough for this floor, frankly. And then I started to put in the wooden pillars, but I realized actually, this is a stone house and do we really want these wooden pillars in? So I took them out and decided to do something different a little bit later. You 
used a fairly simple roof structure and made sure that we've got some nice edging with some stone bricks and then continued on to use some oak to fill in the actual roof itself. sided fireplace might look good, meaning four campfires went inside. Also decided just slight overhang on that roof just to give it a little bit more character. As always, rough the roof up, the straight lines are just too much. try building up the corners of the house with more stone just to see what the effect would be like. Now it's often at this point in the build where I look at it and I think what have you done? How is this possibly going to work out? And sometimes actually I'm right but sometimes it actually pays to persist and keep on going. I'm totally unsure with these bits on the corners. I've got to do something really quite clever with those to make those work but we'll continue to try and we'll see what happens. What I think I do need to do is I need to split up this tall um, stone fascia because there's just too much stone there and as a result it's it's just going to look like it's a, a big lump of nothingness. So what we're going to do is we're going to decide where we want to split it and I'm going to come here simply because that's where the wood starts and I'm just going to put a row across the top. That gives us enough space over the top of those windows and that door and enough space here to be able to do something with it which means I have to correspondingly do the same at this end as well. Again at the bottom of that so as I've got enough space there to be able to work on that quite happily. At the other end however, at this end here, we've not really got that much space so I'm going to keep this as a completely open fascia. We have got some weird wood stuffs going on here but there's nothing we can do about that at the moment unfortunately. That's just the way this is going to have to fly otherwise we're going to have gaps. We'll work something out that might be able to hide that up in just a moment. You'll notice that we've textured up the chimney a little bit differently to the way we textured up the walls. It's quite simple to just change the texture and create a slightly different structure. It's part of the house but you can see it's got more stone brick in it and as a result it becomes slightly different. We also need to change the direction of this. It's far too up and down and I want to break that up a little bit and we'll do that in just a moment using some fencing and some steps and things like that. So I started by moving the chimney one block to the right, giving it a slightly offset look using some steps and then built it up ever so slightly higher before putting some stone fences around the top and some campfires inside. That gives us the smoke effect. I then roughed it up using some steps inside that chimney breast because that gives it a nice weathered look. It was then time for bushes. I don't really need to say a lot more, but apart from the fact I don't go mad with the bushes, I'm not trying to cover up this stone, I'm just trying to give a little bit of a bushed green effect so it offsets all that grey. Need a bit of light, so we put some lanterns around the place, not just on the higher levels, but also on the window sills. I use some of those stone walls to place lanterns on top of as well. I brought a little bit of path both left and right outside the front of the house to give me some options because the walkabout world needs something to walk about on. I then brought in a little bit of crop by putting some water underneath some of those stone blocks and a randomly shaped field. 
I thought the other side needed something a little bit different, not just like a melon patch like last time. So I thought, let's pull in a custom oak tree. So I built in the shape. I actually, looking at it now, think that I need to bring a little bit less of that bulky leafage. So I'm going to remove some of those leaves before we finish and make it look a little bit more interesting. We took one of those large boughs and we hung a swing using some trapdoors and some birch fence before bringing the path all the way around it. And by Jove, I think we might have just about finished this fella. The tree's been slightly trimmed. I think it looks much better. And we've just added a little bit more detail in terms of bone mealing and the old flower. Nothing more than that. Inside, however, we have done a little bit of work. So let's go and have a look inside and see what has been done. Inside these double spruce doors, if I can actually get in, we've put in a lot of storage and a little bit of decoration. We've trimmed around the windows on every side some of them supported some of them not supported depending on what's around them we've got an infinite water source there taken into uh, two kind of perpendicular blocks that will then serve that brewing stand along with an anvil we don't have an enchanting setup but it's only a little cottage for goodness sake plenty of storage however lots of smelting and crafting capabilities a double fire come in at both different angles that you can see through which is ever so lovely little mantelpiece above the fire and a higher mantelpiece there with some light and a little bit of storage and then our living area bed crafting obviously tools and weapons and then in the chest i think it worked out well a nice easy walkabout world episode there episode four the stone cottage with the tree and the swing. I hope you enjoyed it as much as you've enjoyed one, two, and three in the distance there. The world download is, as always, in the description below, and you get this entire world from episode one right the way through. Episode five coming next. I wonder what it will be. If you've got any really great ideas, do let me know in the comments below. Hashtag walkabout and slap your idea in. I've got so many great ideas already. I'm going to be doing this thing till 2025, and I'm really very, very grateful. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I will keep on making them. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.